Uh, I would like to show one little thing just so we have an idea what, we, what we're looking at because of, let me take this off. Uh, because if I just show you it, we don't even see what we're seeing here. So I just wanted to uh, uh, just kind of uh, have an idea so you understand the main components of the party. Uh, so basically, anytime we're talking about uh, locks, hold on, this is oh, just doing, showing the whole thing. Anytime we're talking about console lock, we use this in a sentence, we're not talking about the console lock. Uh, <laughs> the, everything we're doing here has nothing to do with the console lock. Uh, what console lock is global and we are talking about the per console locking console. That's right. You can lock each individual console. And each individual console now has a state so that you can see which CPU owns it, what, at what priority it's printing. So we have three different priorities. We have normal, which, for example, the threaded printer would be using. Uh, we've declared an emergency uh, printing for, for example, worn-ons or uh, mm. RCU uh, uh, yeah, stalls. Uh, and then the panic is when we're really in panic mode. And the reason why we're def defining these three different priorities is so that when something more important comes along, it can take over. Right? So I'll, I'll talk about that in one second here. So we have these states per, per console that, they, we, that we can see. For example, also, the, obviously, the flags, if it's locked. Uh, we also have something called an unsafe mode. Uh, if, a, if a driver is in a, posi is in a position that it, it can't be... Uh, it can't do atomic printing, then it can mark itself before it goes into this section as unsafe. We'll go into that. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll talk about that later. There's little details. Uh, each CPU for itself also has a uh, state where it's tracking its own priority that is currently print that it wants to print. So, for example, there might be a console printer on CPU zero that's printing something uh, like a panic, and maybe another CPU would want to do a warning. So. The, each CPU needs is keeping track of which priority it's trying to get out. Obviously, the one with the panic is the one who's going to actually get the printer. So we have this uh, tracking there. And we also have this nested priority tra tracking per CPU because, for example, if we have a, a panic and then while doing the panic, that jumps into a warn, uh, then we don't want the warn to now be immediately printed. We just, for example, just want the warn to go into the ring buffer and we want to keep keep on printing that uh, panic. Uh, so we have some things to track that. And the important thing is, which we're actually presenting, is the idea of how do I acquire the console lock, this per console lock that we have. Uh, and what it is is you provide a state. So if a CPU wants to print, a CPU says, I would like to print, it actually has to provide uh, a context where it's saying uh, what priority I want, what CPU I am. Uh, and it can also provide some information. I want to do a friendly takeover or a hostile takeover. We'll see examples of both of these. Or I'm with, I would like to spin, and if I don't get it within a certain amount of time, I would like to know these kinds of things. So that you can specify in this context when you try to acquire ownership of this printer how you want to do it. And really, the only rule that we have, which is very simple, is the one who gets the actual ownership is the one with the highest priority. So if I have one CPU that's doing a warning and a second CPU that shows up with a warning, that second CPU is not going to be able to acquire that printer because warning, warning is the same priority. There's already someone with a priority of warning that's printing. And so the second one will just dump it into the ring buffer and we'll let that, that first printer keep going. We're talking about situations where something's going wrong. So we're talking about uh, warnings and, and RCU stalls and things like this. So this idea of one CPU is doing all of the work is not so important. We want to just make sure that the one who has uh, the most critical uh, messages uh, to print, that's the one that's actually doing the printing. So even when we're talking about this nesting, this rule still applies. So if I'm a printer uh, and I'm printing, for example, a panic, and I hit a warning, that warning will also try to acquire it, and it won't be able to acquire it because uh, the printer is already of priority of panic, right? So the warning will not be able to start printing it. It'll just going to dump it into the ring buffer, and we'll get back to the printing the panic and continue with that, right? So we just want to make sure that the one who actually does the most important uh, situation, that that's the one that gets to print. And then lastly here, just to kind of show you what a handover looks like, because Thomas talked about this handover, we call it a friendly handover. Uh, basically, this is an example where we have like a, a, a K-thread uh, printer, which would be a normal priority, priority one. And on another CPU, we can say we have a warning. 
So in this in this CPU, we have the, the function, the, the K-thread function that's running. It's going to do a normal acquire. And we're going to assume nobody has it. So obviously, it's going to be able to acquire this printer. And now that it has the printer, it's the one that's allowed to print. But now if we say, for example, if another CPU, now a warn on comes or something, uh, this CPU will first has to specify which priority lever it is. So this will be like in the warn on code, where it's saying, I want to activate for my CPU priority two. Uh, at this point, we're also, migration is disabled. So at this point, we're definitely uh, CPU, we're staying on CPU one. Then when it starts doing its print case, first thing goes directly to the ring buffer lockless. Then it's going to try to acquire this. And it's going to try to do it in a friendly way. In a friendly way. Uh, it does a first step where it says, I would like to have that. This is my priority. Uh, and then the second step where it does a compare exchange. Uh, this is basically just a two-step process uh, where it actually officially posts the request. Uh, makes the, so this first step is basically I'm saying that I would like to have it. In the second step, I'm making it visible uh, to the other CPU. And then I'm just going to spin. And I'm going to wait for the current owner, uh, who has a priority one, to give it to me. Yeah, so this is what we call a friendly handover. So this side, it does its acquire. It will want to emit, so it actually wants to print. It'll do a, write, a new write thread callback on the console. And this write thread callback needs, for every character it's putting out, it needs to make sure, am I allowed to keep going? Am I allowed to keep going? Uh, and basically, this function is checking the, the things that we compare exchanged here. So as soon as it sees, oh, somebody else has set up a request, has a higher priority than me, then this proceed will actually do a release. And it will, this state that we committed here will now become the new ownership. So basically, he's giving, he's, he's now compare exchanging this owner into the actual ownership of the console. So after this, then it comes out of a uh, consummate record actually with a, a false because it would fail. So you see that uh, the k thread function doesn't actually do a release because the proceed function, the checking for the proceed uh, returning a false uh, that, that goes all the way up so that we get a false here so that I don't have to release it. It means it, I'm, I gave it up. And so basically now this loop can start again where it tries to reacquire it. On this side, I'm spinning, waiting for that release, this compare exchange here. Uh, and then I have it, right? So I see that, I, that I see that that value comes there that I've been waiting for. That's the value I set up here. And I said that it's the value that now appeared there. So now I know I have it. So now I can do basically the same thing. Instead of raising a write thread callback, I have a write atomic callback, uh, where maybe I have to do some other things with the registers or whatever. This is a, a different implementation maybe then. A red, write thread is guaranteed sleepable. And write atomic is guaranteed NMI safe. So it's, in many cases, it's probably different code that's, that's running there. And even this guy has to check for every single byte he's writing, he has to check if he can proceed, because maybe on CPU 2, a panic shows up. And then the same thing happens where maybe I give it up because the panic now has to take over. So it's really important that after every byte I send, or whatever atom, uh, atomic unit the hardware can support, uh, that I can send, that I have to check am I allowed to continue. So in this case, we just assume I print till I'm happy, till I'm done. Then I will actually do a con release. And then I will mark the end of this uh, prior to two section uh, for my for printing. So any print case that happen after this are not going to be priority two. They're going to be whatever the original priority was, which in this case will be priority one. So this is kind of like a friendly uh, takeover. We also have hostile takeovers, because you can imagine maybe this guy is dead or he's been preempted and he's not able to do this compare exchange here. So that's why you can specify timeouts and do hostile takeovers. And of course, there's a situation that maybe this actually got preempted by someone who did a warn, like maybe an interrupt came and there was a warn there. Uh, so actually we're preempt, we are already the owner and we preempted that. We also still have to do a hostile takeover because the owner of a console is not just a CPU, it's a context. And when we come into a new context, like an interrupt context, or even a, a sub-function context, uh, we still, that context still has to reacquire, try to take over it, right? So, uh, but of course, if it's the same CPU, you have to do a hostile takeover because you can't do this handshaking. Anyway, so that's just kind of talking about that. 
uh, I have m multiple demos here. We don't know all of them. Just going to show a friendly takeover, hostile takeovers, uh, when you've got a takeover and another takeover happens and things like this. So we can kind of just go through that. Any questions up until this point? Yeah. Oh, um, a bunch. Okay. So uh, if you've had some other interrupt that comes or another request that comes in, which is the same priority, and it gets put on the queue, once it finishes this, how does it end up in that to, to service that particular request rather than returning to the first That's a good question. Number? It doesn't go into a queue. So if I'm a CPU and I, and I do a, oh, sorry, I, ring this. Yeah, right. So I do this acquire here and it fails. Uh, I, my print K is still going to go through, and okay. this going into the buffer is still there. So if I fail to acquire this, then I'm just out. So I keep doing my print K. I'm just not the I'm not the printer. It's okay. still all going to the ring buffer, right? So <laughs> if there's a panic on one CPU, the other CPUs can still do print Ks, okay. but it's just going straight to the ring buffer. It's okay. not being printed. Right? Thank you. Because we don't want if we've got an important printer going, we don't want to inter interrupt that first, right? You need, to just, you just need to keep going because it has the CPU, it's alive, and we, you know, anytime we take it over, we might actually be jeopardizing uh, something there. Other questions, Matthew? Yeah. Uh, on hostile takeover, uh, after the takeover, uh, whatever was using the resource, you, I mean, kill it, you let it continue eventually, or what happens to it? This is, this is what this function is taking care of, this proceed. So it's also monitoring the owner of that console. So if it sees uh, that this, the state has changed, anything in that state has changed. It wasn't me, someone changed it, that was a hostile takeover. So it will also abort out. So, so it's going to be a driver and context specific decision what to do. Um, I mean, we also have um, the ability to actually tell I'm in an unsafe region now, don't take me over. I mean, that's a policy of the caller. We didn't implement any of those policies in the in the actual handshake code because that doesn't make sense. The only policy here is higher priority wins. Anything else is out to the caller because we can't. It's it's specific to what the, the, the console driver actually provides. I mean, today we do... Uh, Oh, we take the console forcefully. We do not care about state, and we just try, pray, and die unconditionally. So, because now, if you have state, <clears throat> you can actually um, decide, for example, in a panic situation, not to print on an unsafe console if you have a safe one because then you actually get the information out or prioritize them in other ways because you say p store is the, the the persistent storage is the is the first we want to go and then we try the others Paul. so if you have a hostile takeover the friend that got taken over top and was off uh, out to lunch uh does it is it it's its job to make sure that it uh, holds on to it and does checks uh, elsewise, or is the thing where hostile takeover there some unsafe? So, obviously, a hostile takeover is in some way unsafe. Okay. Uh, that's stuff you need to solve at the driver level. But we made sure at the cool level that the context and the buffers are are not shared between the two, so they are completely separate. So, but obviously, if you detect in console can can proceed or in any, any other core function that somebody else changed your state, you have to go go back out fully and bail okay. because then your context is invalid. So, what happens during the time where you're, where you got you got stopped for a pizza for a while? You come back and now you do some stuff, not realizing you've been taken over. Uh, is, is that just part of the unsafety, or is well, that's part of the unsafety? I mean, in the serial console, in the serial case, it just will print out a, a few garbled characters. Yeah. So until and it notices. As you say, it's no worse than we have today. Yes, no, it's it's definitely not worse. Yeah. And we've added functions that uh, this driver code can actually mark and say, I'm actually entering an unsafe because I have to do five register operations atomically. Right. Uh, and so when this fails, we can get the information, ah, it failed because that's in an unsafe 
decision, and we can then decide policy-wise what do we want to do. Well, so the, if we decide still to print on it, then the unsafe bit gets handed into the right atomic callback, so the driver has actually a chance to say, oh, uh, either I was unsafe, I look in my internal state, whether I have, can clean that up, or I better just go away. So, so for example, a driver might decide to print some little thing saying something bad happened here, and then continue printing. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you can imagine, like, in a serial console, if it's going to start playing with its baud rate or something. Right. Uh, then it can just mark. I'm, I'm marking myself unsafe, and I can play with my baud rate, mark myself safe. And if in that moment a panic comes, maybe if the driver can handle it, it's up to the author right. or the hardware. Maybe it can't. But then if it can't handle it, then that panic routine, when we're panicking, we can decide that's unsafe. Uh, we're just not going to use that one. And maybe we have other ones where we can, P-Store and whatever, we can use those. So we're not just... Like right now, we're just trying them all. Mm -hmm. And if the third one crashes, then it's over, and we want to have... And we got one line out on two consoles. Yeah. We want to know we have three safe options. We can take those options. We'll try the unsafe stuff maybe as a last resort, or maybe not at all. It depends. Okay. I'll start take over. Would it make sense to just reset the state of this real console? Clear it out. As, as on it's a driver. It's a driver's decision. We can't do anything in the in the core. Core can't impose driver policy. It, it, it hands in information, and then the driver can make an informed decision. So that's what kind of what we try to do today with uh, uh, oops in progress. Just it's a pretty heuristic scheme. I mean, there it's going to end up in heuristics as well, but at least you get some more information because you have you have state and you are not completely stateless. And you have a problem right now that this we currently have a write callback. Where's callback? We currently just have a write callback, and all it does is it gives a string and a length. Like, is this a is this a panic message? Is this an info? The, the driver right now knows nothing, right? And with these new callbacks, they're actually given the context. So they know the priority, they know the CPU, they know the whole, was it, with, was it a hostile takeover? All of this information is available to the, to the console driver. So the console can drive and say, oh, hostile, oh, no, forget it. Oh, but we're priority two? Okay, then maybe I can do this or that. Like, this is, these are things that, that the driver can then decide uh, with some sort of policies. Uh, or I don't even know how we do the policies. We have to, we have to decide where the policies are going to sit. But at least we have the tools and the information to make intelligent decisions. Right? Because if something's crashed and we know we've got a couple that will work, then let's just use those first, right? And then we know we got the whole ring buffer is out. Now let's try those guys that were unsafe or hostile takeover or whatever. Right? So that's pretty much the idea. Any other questions? Any other questions from the remote people? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Hello, this is Peter Mladek. Hey, okay, Peter. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask uh, if uh, there is some diff if uh, we will handle like the pending messages when when some CPU switch into the uh, warning mode and takes over console will it also handle all pending messages that might be on on, on the buffer air were not handled yet by that K thread. Or what? maybe also new messages that appear from another CPUs. So, so right now we, if there is backlog in the ring uh, on the console versus the ring buffer, which is not the warning level right now, we print those first and then get to the warning, and after the warning we we hand off. You'll see that in but, the demo. But you can, I mean, this is something we just made it that way because that's how it works today. Uh, yeah, yeah. As there can be a debate about whether we should, in a, in a worn case, just ignore the backlog and get the worn out and nothing else, but that's a, an orthogonal problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree that we should probably keep the current behavior for now. Yeah, I mean, for now we can... For now, we do not have much of a choice because if we convert console drivers one by one over and we have the mix between the 
the the the existing ones which still fun function the old way and the new ones then we have to agree on something and not make the ones behave totally different than the others i mean once we can we say everything is on the new scheme we can come up with and 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 decide on on, on changing things yeah and actually that's something we didn't mention if for people that did see the, the rfc patch series uh, this all of this logic there's a new console flag that's introduced so uh, the driver has to implement these write atomic and write thread functions, and they have to set a new console flag. So, if, so if there are drivers that aren't the existing drivers don't have this flag, and so they're using the same stuff that we're that they've always been using, and so we're going to have to individually convert these drivers over if we want them to have this these advantages. So we're kind of hoping this uh, maybe put some pressure on on some driver developers that they want to have threaded and atomic support. They want to be preferred when there's a crash, then they're going to have to implement these things uh, on their driver. And if you have a system that's mixed, yeah, so I've got a graphic console and I've got some fancy new stuff, your system is still going to be crap. Uh, you, you, because the old stuff still has to use the console lock, right? So uh, really, ideally, at some point, we've converted, uh, at least if you have a system where all the consoles you are using have been converted to this, and we're working together with Daniel and stuff, to, to, to see how can we get even the graphics stuff over here. Uh, if you have a system that's only using the new ones, then you're good. Then you then you can have reliable panics and and, and warns, and you know you're going to see the see the information. So so that's where we're going. This is actually the main one of the main differences to, to this new approach is that we're going to be introducing a driver by driver. So we'll have the infrastructure now, and that's what we want. And then just driver support will come afterwards. Because I think even as an author, it would be much more exciting uh, to, to implement a right thread right now where you know you're always in a sleepable context, you have all this additional information, uh, and it's the same for right atomic, you know exactly what's going on. So I think that makes it much more exciting. I, I had a lot more fun doing the 8250 with this stuff. Greg? How many ser old serial console drivers do we have that have never been touched in years? I did a test just who, how many console registers we have, and there's 76. A lot of those are really old. Yeah, but I mean, they function a lot the same. So it's, you know, if all they're doing is writing it into a... Most, of, most of the serial ones are copy and paste. Yeah, True. it's amazing. Copy and paste Sorry, what do you mean by console registers? Uh, or register console is the function. It's the function where that a driver uses to register itself as a console. Okay. So I just went through the code and said how many... You just have how many the number of invocations. Yeah, I mean, it's not quite the same thing because, I mean, the 8250 has, like, eight different variants, and they're using one yeah, register. So, yeah, so, so how many, how, is it 8251 or is it 12? Like, I don't know. So it's the older way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right, but we can, but you use the same function. It's just if you set that flag and you implement these these uh, functions, then you're using the new way. Boris? So how does this look practically? So CPU is here going to get interrupted in the middle of the line. And the warrant's going to start up. Yes, and you'll see this in, in, the, in the demo right now. So when this one, uh, because the se sequence counter is also per console, and it's not updated until this, this one actually finished the full record. Then it updates its, its sequence counter. So, for example, if it was in the middle and it got taken over, uh, and it knows it was taken over, maybe it was friendly, then it knows I only did a half a line, but I'm out. I have to get out because I, I gave uh, the ownership of the printer to the other CPU. And so, the, and for this CPU, that sequence counter hasn't been incremented yet. So what you practical on the practical level right now, what you'll see is you'll see a half a line, and then that line will be from the beginning printed again. Now we could implement things like we add an end line. We also have metadata in there so that this guy actually knows how has access to his buffer, and he knows how far he got. So we could even finish the line for the other guy if we wanted, but we didn't go there yet. We don't need to go crazy right now. So right now it's just starting over and does the whole line. And, and Thomas had a very important point, like what kind of, what part of the record is going to be important when you look at the warning? Is it the, the record which should actually, you know, is related to the warning? Maybe you want to see it first. Right, so we have, yeah, we have like, here we always print the backlog. Yeah. Right now we always do the backlog. But for example, here we're marking, hey, I'm going into a priority two, where everything on my print case should have this level of importance. You know, so if I check what the sequence number is right now, then potentially that's where I could start actually printing, right? But you're going to see a jump, and I don't know if people are ready for that, but 
Uh, yeah, right now we're just doing the backlog. That's You'll a different that. story. It's a different story. A question. Uh, you also said basically if you have like some drivers that are not converted and some that are, that you still have a crap system. Is there, uh, does user space have access to know that they're in that state or can you have a flag that says turn off all the drivers that are not in a good, uh, in a, that want a good system? Yeah. Is, there, is that information, is that there yet or? No? Not yet, but uh, we're planning to add at least a, a kernel command line option to say ignore all old style consoles. Okay. So, or uh, just use whatever is there. I mean, that's that's an option we want to give people. And we want to use that option for, for RT, obviously. And can we have and a taint or something if it's in that state? Pardon? We have a taint or something. So uh, something that tells that, or, oh, you know, yes. why, why didn't I get all the output? Oh, I have, I have one of my drivers is crappy. They may not just know. Yeah, we, 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 we can add something like that. And, and the reason why it's crap is not because the, the problems we have now are not just about crashing. The problems we have are during the runtime where uh, and, and print K is uh, unfortunately a line by line base. So we, if the console lock is still being used because of legacy drivers, then for each of those lines, it's still going to try all of this legacy stuff. So they might hang the system or, or do whatever they do now, right? So that's why we really need to completely get away from the console lock uh, eventually. We will eventually. We have to. It's a BKL. Sounds like a, a sounds like a good uh, test for new kernel developers. Convert old drivers to newer style. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Start recruiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if the one on the left is printing the long and normal print code message, then mm -hmm. the warning happens. But the one on the left with one character from the end of the line, mm -hmm. then the warning happens, and then the whole of the rest of the line is printed. Is that always the right answer, or should we have some kind of Urgency rather than just the priority for the, the one thing you're I mean, you can go uh, infinite complex on those decisions. We made it simple as a start. I mean, you can always. I don't think you need more. I mean, the, 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 the stuff where we care about is you have a warning, and if a warning hits, something went wrong, and you won't. Pardon? <laughs> Tell me that's true for 50% of the warnings in the kernel. Yeah. I don't know if we want warnings interrupting printing Panic? Yes. Warning? Maybe not. Oh, but the in, in a, quite some cases, the warning might be the last thing you see before it deadlocks or whatever. So, I mean, there's no. There's no universal answer to that question except 42. So, and un honestly, the way it's written right now, this infrastructure doesn't even implement. Does not even take care of that. Really, it's it's really the person who in, in implements Right Atomic. They know how far the other one was. Maybe some will do something. I don't know if we're gonna try to have some sort of right generic now, policy code we want to use. I wouldn't fool it. It's up to the driver right now. I would fool the first steps. I would just say reprint it and be done with it. It's simple, it's fail safe, it's not fancy. And then when we have enough confidence, we can try the fancy shit on top. Yeah. I mean, starting with fancy and complex sounds lovely, but it's never ending well. Let you just play this side with EVPF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just a question of time. <laughs> So any other things? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this uh, looks like. So just so you understand what you're seeing here, uh, I'm, us I'm using QEMO, and uh, so for, as an atomic console, basically we hacked an 8250 early, so the interrupts, for the interrupts on that inter interrupt controller are always off. It's a very simple, you just put it into the TX FIFO and, it's, it's and wait till it goes. the first fully NMI and re-entry safe console driver we have. <laughs> Yeah, so it's very simple, but obviously you can't put like a Getty on it, right? Because you, it's not using the, the port lock, uh, it's we not could. doing any reading. We could. Just we, can, we can make it more, more tricky. Yeah, but right now it's just output. So what I've done with QEMO is I have the first serial port, I'm going to have a Getty on it. Uh, that's actually what you're going to see in the little window. And in the big window, this is that second serial port that's actually the 8250 early. 
So this window is actually using the normal A250 driver. It's the, the first serial port, and the second serial port is using the other one. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, look at this thing. And so I'm just having it do it into a file with Kuimo. And one thing, uh, when I, what I also have modified is, is uh, I uh, modified the driver uh, so that when it prints something, the first two characters uh, say A or T, actually it was in Thomas's patch set, so that we know these lines that we're seeing, was it from, a, from the atomic right or was it from the threaded right? Just so that we can kind of track where that's coming from, which, which function callback actually printed that. And the second character is the CPU number that actually printed. It's not the CPU of, the, of the, where the print tape came from. It's the, the CPU of the, of the printer. So we can just kind of track what's happening there. So initially, when you boot, you have no threads whatsoever. So at the beginning, we are actually doing atomic uh, uh, printing uh, until we get uh, some CPUs online, and then we can do some K threads. So you'll see that here. And I'm also, on purpose, emulating a slower serial, because I think this is important that we understand the speed of the printer is not necessarily the speed that things are going at, right? So this is a printing relatively slow. Uh, we're seeing that it's switched to the the threads, now, I'm sorry, okay, we're still in atomic on zero, so we still have to have multi-thread running. At some point it's gonna bring the SMP up, here we go. Right, and so now it's switched to threads, and you'll see here, my machine's booted. Right, so it's actually finished booting, but because our, our serial console is so slow, the printer is taking a lot longer. So when Thomas was saying his boot times are much faster, it's because of this. We don't have to, to wait for these print cases. Now, this is exaggerated because I'm at like 9,600 baht or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was important so that you really get a feeling because a lot of people are surprised when they see this. You know, because this is what you'll see if, on, on your terminal. And you can actually already log in, and it still has lots of stuff to print, right? So now it's finally caught up, right? And if for those people that are not familiar with this, this is the, the caller ID feature of print K. So, that, so here we're saying uh, which task or CPU created the print K, and here we're saying the printer, if it was uh, the task or atomic there. Okay, so that's what that that looks like. So John, yeah? I, I, I'm running back and forth. So, um, <laughs> What happens when the buffer is full? Does whatever printing stop? You said, or so the case where I mean, obviously you said you can move forward, but if something doesn't print K and the buffer is full because it's actually not catching up, what happens? The internal buffer. It's a ring buffer, so yeah. you just lost, you start seeing drop messages. Oh, you just, just like now. So basically, you do drop messages. So what happens if one of those drop messages was important? It's the same problem we have now. What? It's the same problem we have now. <clears throat> So we're having the same problem right now. No, no, we wrap around. We wrap around. And then you get the drop message information. So I know we get overflow. But that's a print. That's a ring buffer issue that has nothing to do with the consoles. I mean, if the consoles are slow and do not catch up with the flood of messages coming into the ring buffer. There's not much you can do about it except making a great bigger ring buffer or so defining a dropping newer newer prints, not the no the old ones. Oh, because so you're just filling it. Oh, right. so it goes right. in circles. It overrides the tail. Okay, that's the thing. It's like before, I thought the, uh, the current approach is that we <coughs> no, we override the tail. No. Just it's just like a cat on trace pipe. If that's wrapping, the cat's just going to start missing okay, stuff. Right? Okay. I just want to make sure that we do get the latest. No, no, we oh. overwrite the tail. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Just look. We didn't change any of that. That's not. That's all. We didn't touch a ring buffer. <laughs> and, and you have a marker that the tail has been overwritten. Pardon? Does it show that you lost information? When you yeah, you get the drop messages. <laughs> Okay, so that all I did was just boot it. I was never excited. I'm going to do a, now a demo where I actually am going to do a warning. Uh, I'm going to trigger a warning on the first CPU just so that we can watch how the behavior there changes. So let me go ahead and um, and I think I'm going to speed up the bot rate a little bit because maybe Firefox is slowing things down a little bit. So let's go to something like this. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and start this. And it's, it's going to boot again. And I'm going to wait till we get to the threads. And as soon as I see that there's a thread printing, you know, I'll have my Getty here because it'll have booted. 
uh, and then I'm going to trigger a warning. I just do a, uh, basically I put myself on the first CPU and then echo a, uh, no, I don't echo, uh, I, I hacked up load average so that it doesn't warn on. So I just cat load average, basically. Okay, so I'm in there now, and we see that the threaded printer is printing. So I'm just going to say on the first CPU, a warning, and you see immediately the second CPU is now doing atomic printing. We're still, these are still the boot messages because it's flushing the backlog. But we immediately begin printing from the, from the other CPU uh, in atomic mode. And then we see these things here, right? And uh, here I can also show now the details because I add some debug information. Uh, this function isn't, isn't available in mainland, but it's really cool. Uh, I have a function that just puts messages in the ring buffer but does not do anything else because it's a lockless ring buffer. So I can basically insert some messages in there without really affecting the system so that we kind of see what's happening here. So, Quite useful function so that print can debug itself. But um, <laughs> so what you see here, so these timestamps that you're seeing are the real timestamps in that moment, right? This is not what it went on the console. This is what we fixed with the new ring buffer. You're actually seeing the real timestamps. Wow. So you're seeing after 23 se seconds, our system was booted. Uh, seven seconds later is when I hit this warn. And here you see the, the debug information. This is inside the warn, uh, the warn function uh, where it's doing this uh, atomic enter. Uh, and it's saying, I want to be priority two, which is, this, which is the warning level. And it's previously uninitialized, which is uh, one and zero is, is the same in that, fall, in that case. OK, so the warn function, the first thing it does is it goes into this atomic mode. And then it does its normal print k. And so what you see is the first thing print k does is it stores it in the ring buffer. That's why we're seeing the timestamp in that first line. It's immediately in the ring buffer. Then, after it's in the ring buffer, it tries to acquire it because it wants to print it. And it sees, I'm a higher priority than the current printer. The current printer is priority one, I'm priority two. So here we see that it's first uh, setting up the request for a prior two, and then it's doing that second compare exchange so that the, the other one knows uh, that it wants it. And then we're saying that CPU one begins to spin. CPU zero, after every byte, is checking for progress. It's saying, oh, I'm not allowed to proceed. So it does that compare exchange, basically putting the thing that I set up here into the state uh, with the compare exchange. And now I recognize, I'm just going to try, I'm just in a, in a loop watching for that to, to, uh, as a confirmation of that. And now I see, OK, now I'm the one that's in charge. And now I'm the one who can start printing. What you see here, and this is what's a little bit tricky, we're seeing actually he's printing the whole time because this is this came much later. The actual printing came much later. But we can see the timestamps when these things happen. We see also a 12 second jump here between when I got it and the next message of that warning. And that's because I have to flush the backlog, right? So before I could get to that second line of the warning, I had to flush that backlog. And that's why we see that there's 12 seconds to get that flushed out. And now I'm actually doing atomic. Uh, printing with this new context. Now, if we go up to where it actually took over, which we talked about earlier, what it looks like, we see here uh, the thread was printing. That's where the, took uh, the takeover happened. And so this line, 16, 7, 2, 3, 4, blah, is printed again, but this time it's in atomic and CPU 1 instead of thread and CPU 0. Right? So we can talk about how can we make that nicer. Uh, because the driver knows that it took it over. It, it took it over from itself. It's the same driver, right? So it, it knows that it took it over. Uh, At least we could put a new line in. We could put a new line in or something like this. <laughs> is this actually, I mean, this is where we know that the warning happens of some kind. I don't know. Or does it happen? You see it anyway. If you have, if you no, this is not the warning. In. This is when the printer took over. The warning happened with the timestamp down there that we saw. Well, see, I see, in, wait, what do you mean? I mean, this is where, oh, the print. That's where the print, the, 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 we, we took over the, from the printer thread, <coughs> we took it over to the atomic context. The warning happened at that point. but it didn't Yeah, yeah. the, the warning happened at that point, but we don't have a timestamp right. at this here. Right. So the timestamp's below. Yeah, printer, it, it, it's back in the the, the, right. that's, that's the backlog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, right. The, 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 the printer. The, 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 the warning happens at 7, 37 seconds, wait, but, wait, wait, wait. but the, the, the thread has still mm -hmm. six, uh, All of this already happens to catch up. I know. Yeah. Well, I was saying, having this little 
I mean, for us, or maybe we should have some other statement saying, you know, uh, statement there, because maybe that might be informative. Something happens and crashes, and like maybe it doesn't get out and we do a triple fall. Well, because it's a one of the back logs. So you have to the back logs. But you know it happened. At least you know that a warning happened. You know the you know where the printer was that got taken over. That's what you know. Yeah, basically. You, know you don't know yeah, where. We can't see that. Here. That's that's easy enough to insert something. Yeah, I'm saying maybe instead of because because now that we have state, we know that this happened, so we can just make the four thirty the the right atomic pre panned like we do. The, the, the thread one with the thread atomic yeah, information we prepend on the actual output buffer right. uh, and so you can prepend something uh, here takeover console takeover mm -hmm. but you don't have to I mean it's the same timestamp it's the same line uh, no it, it's not the timestamp yeah it's yeah because the because the timestamp is the time yeah. When the print K hit the ring buffer, mm. right? That's probably. That's not the, the timestamp is not saying when you are print when right. actual the writer yeah. is right. doing the Somebody output, actually, print. but that's not different yeah. from today. That's yeah. also what 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 what. Yeah, but that's not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are the interest. This is actually the interesting data. The timestamps. Mm. Yeah. That's when things actually happen. After 16 seconds, <laughs> UDP light hash table, blah blah blah. We we know this. This is totally reliable timestamps. The printer is just something that's doing something in background, trying to catch up. Even if it switches to atomic, then there's a huge backlog. We're seeing stuff that happened maybe two hours ago. Right. Who knows what? Uh, Unless you're debugging print you just don't care about this. You yeah. might well, make it seamless and print what happened at the top. You don't care about that. Oh, when possibly a future point in the log, there will be a warning that you will see. You uh, I think that's this what the log level is, is just for. for now. You won't get this information. That's what the log level is for. The, the only care, the case you care about is the style takeover, maybe. But I mean, when it's a graceful takeover, I mean, that's. Yeah, graceful takeover is probably not that interesting. The host style one might be. You know, I'm just looking at for, for one thing you can do if you know when the system put it, and if you're. If you're automatically keeping track of it, you're scripting things or something like that. Uh, you can look at the timestamp, look at the time difference, and know how far behind it is. And you might need to do that because I bet the timestamp jumps forward for an emergency and then comes back after the emergency is done. So if you have a bunch of stuff and then you get a warn on which you get jumped up earlier, then you see the timestamp jump. Right, right now we we process the backlog first. Uh, so that's something we could decide afterwards to say. Uh, Print. Ignore the backlog and just get the wounding out. Okay, I misunderstood the priority. Yeah, but the, the thing is, is that's a that's no, the a, priority thing is only to to make sure that we gra can gracefully hand over to one printer, printer yeah. and not uh, have three CPUs who all hit the wounding fight about the printer. Okay. I mean, it's also important to understand that this is actually a printer issue. It has nothing to do with the ring buffer. So when this situation happens, the printer, just like drop messages, drop messages never show up in the ring buffer. That's something that the printer gives right now. right? So we could have the printer say, I'm taking over at this time, blah, blah, blah. It's not in the ring buffer. Uh, I'm going to backtrack and show this. Or, you know, the printer could give information. Well, but it's terrible it, because you can print so much that you slow yourself down. And, well, we don't yeah. print a whole book, but... Yeah. But I mean, I think we're talking about the console here. So I mean, the CI people would freak out if we started injecting things in the wrong order and all this stuff. But oh, yeah. the, the point is, is it's the printer. Drop messages is the same thing. It doesn't fit this format at all. Drop message is just an ugly string there, and it's not in the in the, in the ring buffer. It's just what the printer gives you. It says, "I drop 300 messages." Uh, so a printer could put something in there just for information's sake. But, I'm sure this is already said. I'm sure this is what's said, but just just. Uh, so the war the whoever triggered the warn on takes over and is doing all the work and the warn on does not return until this is done printing. Yes. Right. Yes. Until the end of the warn on is reached. Right. Right. Until someone more important comes, and that's the next demo. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll start we'll trigger a warn and while the warn uh, is going, we're gonna trigger panic just so that we can so, see well, this in action. So that's the whole point. And so another warning will not interrupt a first one. No, it, and it'll get, those will, will immediately go in, so they're not even going like, to be like blocking or, or, or anything. They, that warning will immediately go in the ring buffer, and 
Yeah. It's over. So I was just thinking about warning on panic. You know, the warning happens in the panic. As long as it doesn't return and it does the panic, we don't panic the machine before we're done printing. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the panic will also print. I mean, we have a panic right. function that also does this stuff. So. so once you've got warnings interrupting um, normal priority, then we're going to end up with stuff in the log that's in a different timestamp order. No, no, no. no. not yet. No. We could do that could later on if we right want. Right. <laughs> yeah, right now, this warning is exactly when it happened, right? No, no I'm, I'm saying right now, but yeah. eventually we could end up with that. Eventually of, we could do priority, that. Because of the priorities of which one's most important to print now. We but could. the event actually happened earlier, and so the, time, yes. the real timestamp of when that happened is earlier than the stuff that was printed later that was a higher priority. But we still print them in order. But we still print in order right now. But we could decide later on to say, screw the backlog, the chit chat of uh, random drivers, and just get the wounding out, and then let the driver chit chat continue and let post processing suit the timestamps. They, they, they you guys print the axis, but not print the. the the log. We do not so preempt the, the order. Yeah. No, we preempt the access. The access. In order. You're controlling the access, not. Yes. The, the, the reason is, and that's especially true for panic, you, the panic CPU thinks it still is able to print out, but so, so you want to take over the console immediately because you don't know how long the others are going to be in a usable state. So you don't want to rely on the others to actually do something useful after you already detected the panic and are in uh, some <coughs> hopefully safe state. So there will be still useful information about for that you want yeah. to read. Yes. Yeah. So the, the thing it caused yeah. Yeah. in the first place. So why did the cut here line appear before the takeover? <coughs> The buffer before. Uh, it's because the cut here is coming. Is it the, uh, part of the warn function before it decides to elevate this? Now we could have put that above. So this so is actually, just an order of calls. So, order of calls yeah. so there are two ring. So there are two ring buffers. One for normal information and no. Oh, yes. So Fritk a ring buffer is a singular ring buffer. Yep. So, and what happens if you get multiple warnings? When do you go about the thread printing? You still remain when the warnings yeah. are gone. Both of them. Yeah. So you don't go back and forth. No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, the acquire will be fulfilled yeah. until yeah until it's that priority is gone, and now I can acquire again. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah so it's I, a case by case basis. That's. Well, they didn't run that. We always print them. Yeah. yeah well, and, and we didn't change any of this. We we kept it as much comp compatible to the state we have now, except that we offload to the thread. Yeah, and, and that whole decision has nothing to do with what we're showing, right? We have all of the the buttons and levers now. All the information is there. We can just decide how we want to do it. Maybe we want them have. <laughs> make it configurable or something. I don't know, but that doesn't <laughs> doesn't affect how the takeover occurs, right? So that's all. Basically, you're saying we have all the pinks for the set. Right. Yes. Right. But what color? Pick any color you want. But but we are not we are not using any of those paints yet. Right. They're just in the cans. We haven't opened them yet. Yeah. We 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 leave that for the point where we have converted this all drivers. Huh? This is the primer. Yes. Are there any concerns about like the driver capabilities in there? Like, could you do this with Red AO console and it would be fully functional? That's up to that's yeah. driver yeah. officer. That's a specific question. That's a specific question you have to ask this nice gentleman behind you. Okay. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he's not going to give an answer. <laughs> Except for hand waving. No, no, no. <laughs> console is not the URM. Not finished yet? Yeah. It's like a fancy serial port. Yeah, but I, I think it's pretty bad too. Like, okay. When you looked at it, you said there was like the what? K Malik's in the root I.O. or something. Oh, uh, no, that's the, the, that's the other one. No, the, the root I.O. is uh, stupid. <laughs> Instead of implementing a memory mapped ring buffer lockless, they use spin locks because it's easier. Spin so, yeah. To the hypervisor? No, it's been like in, in internally. Oh. 
Okay, so, so um, yeah, you so, so you have to look at the drivers. So I didn't find a single one which is fully re-entrant. So if you if you really crash inside a section where the <laughs> the driver side spin lock is held, you're dead. So, like it would be nice if something like the syscallers that Google runs automatically were working in the safe environment, like the modern environments kind of things, kind of what I'm getting to. You're yeah. uh, I was talking to the network uh, to the network people about this. Uh, the network, the net console is also not safe. Yeah. Uh, they bail out in certain situations okay. and, and, and just do not do not print at all. Um, so, but uh, with modern multi queue network cards, you could actually put a put a queue aside, uh, create um, either a single descriptor ring pointing to itself or you use two descriptors and you could do a fully re entrancy safe uh, net console which works in any situation. I might have someone that's interested in doing that. I mean it's 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 an obvious uh, solution and if you want to, to have that and it would be pretty cool to do that because uh, on, on some systems where you do not have serial, but you have a network. Yeah, we, we have our, some of our environments are like that. We use that console a lot for our CIs. Yeah. And like I say, I might have someone that's interested in working on it. Because yes, if, if you have one of those fa uh, fancy mm -hmm. hundreds, hundreds yeah. of Q, you. Qs, uh, uh, I know that you do, <laughs> uh, network cards, then putting aside one Q for, for this would be I'll give you, just I, cool. I can give you a Q for CPU. <laughs> and, no, and, and the thing is, it works on the TX side. It doesn't work on, on Oryx, I think. But we don't care about Oryx in that case. <laughs> <laughs> we care about TX. Actually, we can make it work on the Oryx. No, no. I mean, it's no, no, no reason why we would. I mean, console print K output is one directional. We don't want to have interactive print K. <laughs> <laughs> Sys admins curse at the console anyway, so <laughs> why would you need an interactive mode for that? Why not? <laughs> okay, so I would do one more, uh, another demo. Actually, I'd like to do two more. Uh, the next demo, we would like to, I would like to show the hostile takeover and also that the panic comes in on the warn. So I'll show both of these. So we'll start booting, and then um, I'll do a warning on the boot CPU. So that will have to be then a hostile takeover. And then I'll put a panic on another CPU. Uh, so then, uh, actually, I think because the way I do it, I have to do it the other way around. But um, <laughs> <laughs> just run it. Yeah, let me check my notes real quick. Yeah. Okay, any other questions or uh, requests or comments? So I guess the panic is the last demo. Uh, no, I have a really cool demo where RCU saves the day and we get all the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do a, so that's a double hostile, ho let's just do a double hostile, because I can do double friendly, double hostile, because I have lim limited to how, to, uh, to how I did these tools. Okay, so I'm going to do a double hostile, that so means we're going to put a warning on the boot, and then uh, with uh, QEMO you can do NMIs, and they're unknown NMIs, and I'm using the boot option uh, panic on unknown NMI. So basically, uh, I can create an NMI that's going to cause a panic. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and kill that. Uh, how was I supposed to I do a warn? Warn zero NMI. Okay. So I'll go ahead and start this. You can crank, crank up <clears throat> the boot rate. Well, I have to react because I'm going okay. to get these races here. It's, uh, it's, like, it's too fast. Sorry. So as soon as I'm just going to wait till it gets to the threaded, so that it's more interesting because we want to see the thread in the atomic case. So now my machine's booted. So I'm going to do a warning now on the boot. So now it's going to switch to atomic, and then I'm going to do an NMI, which is going to uh, also have to do a hostile hostile takeover. Right, so basically we booted and then we got a warning and then we, we got a panic. Now in this case, it's all on, on the boot proof. So we have a hostile takeover uh, of itself, which isn't the, the one I wanted to show, but I guess we can look at that real quick. Yeah, it did. 
It did, but it's not. It's not. It's it's the boring hostile takeover. Um, <laughs> the reason why this is boring is because. Uh, it sees I'm on, I, I'm on my CPU actually already has it, so obviously I'm just going to do a try a hostile and then just take the hostile, right? So that's not really exciting. Uh, what I wanted to, to show, uh, but I have to do with another CPU, like a panic on another CPU. Let me just show that really quick, it, <laughs> because I would like to show the uh, the hostile takeover. Well, we're going to get to that. So who cares? Okay. No. I'm, Anyway, this, this is the hot, but it's the, it's the same in principle. In principle, the same thing. We go up and we look. Uh, we'll see that the middle of the line. Uh, actually, we should see the panic and the warning in there. Both of them are in there, right? So we have the, should be wait for now. So here for priority three, for priority two. Yes, you. CPU zero. You ruin priority two. Here's the warning. Yeah, this I, I, yeah this is yeah this demo is a little bit right. tricky because I have to wait till it actually starts doing the backtrace on the warn. I did a little bit too fast, so it hadn't started doing the backtrace on the warn yet. That's a little bit tricky because you have to realize this first this first warning is in that print K, and, and these are little funny things, and this, these are the things we actually would like to talk about because uh, maybe they're just missing information. I mean, if you have caller ID on, you can kind of see what's happening. What's happening is I here I had the warning, and the warning will wants to you know it ele elevates it to priority two, and it wants to do the warning. But when it does that first line, the first thing it has to do is the backlog. So it's busy with the backlog. It hasn't even started doing the warning yet. And then the NMI came, panic, and now that one's taking over, right? So. Uh, and now the, the panic CPU is the one that because, because the back. panic the panic context gets its stuff into the ring buffer first and the back trace for the warning hasn't happened yet because it, <laughs> it just did the first line and it, then it was working on the backlog so that's why the, the warning you don't see that here first because it didn't get that far because of that backlog so that's like an argument why you're saying the backlog is a problem because print K unfortunately works line by line. And when it has to do that first line, and then it has to do 30 seconds of backlog, uh, and now something else happens, you know, that obviously that's going to make it to the ring buffer first. This is why we're seeing the NMI uh, panic first, and then way at the end we would see the warning, but we're never going to see it because the machine's dead after the panic. So, wait, wait. so that means that you, okay, so you do the backlog, then you write to the ring buffer? No, the, the backlog is printing the ring buffer. The, the, so the first print K, which goes in, it takes over in atomic mode, and then it starts, obviously, from the backlog. But, so, so the print K, the data in the print K, so it's going to go and do the back, oh, so it gets the first line. It's just one yeah. line, yeah, first oh, line. Before that print K returns, it does the backlog. Yes, yeah, it has to do the backlog. But yeah. you, it has, has to. to. So, so, could you have a priority else you finish printing the warning? So we could, I mean, we didn't change any of the logic of the current code here. This, so mean, this looks wrong because it's a made-up example. In reality, what happens is you really, really, really need to print the old messages because the new messages right. depend on them. Right, right, right. So the, if you have an oops that happens because you're doing a warning that then you an oops, you need to print that warning first because otherwise right. the oops right. will make no sense. Yeah. Yeah, so this looks stupid, but it's because it's a made-up thing. So it, it, the problem is the so, printing interface, actually. So yeah, but if you, you we could <laughs> we could do, but that's that's an orthogonal problem. We could go in the warn code and store first yeah. all the information into the ring buffer and then go printing yeah. because no, then no, it's, no, no, no. And this is what I'm saying. You could do that, but it would be wrong. Because what happens is, and this has happened multiple times, is that as you are storing the information, you take an oops. And if you haven't printed that information yet, the oops will now happen in a vacuum. And it won't make sense. So well, we the had this situation where, yeah. where the oops were in the vacuum. Was in the vacuum. No. In the vacuum. That's the point. no, but that's the point oh. he's making that he's making. So, you have to print the backlog. Yes. No, yeah, it's, it's, but we're not talking about printing the backlog. The backlog is on the print tab. But the thing is, it's going to print the backlog, but you want 
there's a question yeah. like, can you put in a much more data so when the backlog finishes, you see that there's so yes. yeah. on here. Now the thing is, you could have a, like a flip switch, like hold off on, like we'll print the back, or go we'll write, write this, so hold off on printing the backlog. But if you take uh, NMI or something else that does a warning, and it flips the switch, it'll say, wait, the switch is already doing, let's finish the backlog now. Right. You always, at some point, you always have to get so the backlog out. If you will print the backlog, yes, it would yes. be okay. The thing is, you won't print print messages to a buffer, you could, knowing that if something bad happens, that buffer will so, be printed. Right. So, so you could store the whole backtrace first, then start printing. But if you take the NMI in the middle of storing the, 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 the backtrace, it will make sure that the, the, the backlog goes printed out. So, but that's completely orthogonal issues which we have to solve in other places. What I'm trying to say is we want the, actually to me, the first warning is more important than the NMI warning because the first warning could have been the thing that triggered the NMI or whatever the crashing up. Um, the rarely we have the dependent once. Oh no, that's common. Yeah, the second one is then, oh yes, the first one is half printed and then the, the stall warning comes. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes us miss the backtrace from the first one. Yes, so that's what I'm saying, we need to have that stall so, warning. Don't so for that, I, I've right. debugged several of those cases where I actually shut off the, 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 the stall warning because it always happened in the middle of printing and then cut off the interesting part of the stack trace. So I only got to the register dump and then you Oops. Oops. Yes. Yes. We we could do the full store the full backtrace yeah. in the ring buffer yeah. and then start printing. Yes. 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 That's and but what we can do with this new model is we can actually once we got rid of the old thing we can go go actually and say acquire all consoles now and not rely on 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 the thread over the year, we yeah. grab it now, then store everything and then start printing. Yeah. So that because acquire and print are two different right. uh, two different things now. But sorry, wouldn't you want to load the buffer up and then try and flush it out? Like, yeah, so that's yes, that's, that's what we were talking yeah, yeah. about. So he's already kind of showing this with this print king debug. Like, yeah, but added a patch where print K debug is actually yeah. not <laughs> just, it's, it's, it's like just a, a store in the buffer. Yeah, so buffer. we could use that yeah. for storing yeah. the whole backtrace and yeah. then flush it out, yeah. including yeah. the backup. Yeah. 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 But that's that's yeah. a, yeah. Uh, independent of the console mechanism of the of the actual printer mechanism, that's part of where we generate the the backlog and all the uh, whatever surrounding information. So it's all orthogonal problems. But then it becomes important to make sure everybody realizes you have to print the backlog first. Yes. Because the backlog may be your problem. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that you might debate do we need the chit chat thing, but that's what log level is for, so you can just skip over the chit chat. If you think it's not important. Yeah, and we could also like improve that uh, color information. Is, is that third column? We currently just show if it's task contents and date, or if it's some interrupt context, but we don't distinguish is if it's NMI or normal interrupt or what exactly if it's yeah. We have that information, so we could add that. We just didn't bother. So, so we, we just wanted to show the, the takeover between threaded and atomic that it works. And the, the, the sample I had in the cover letter shows that you can. I, I put the warning actually a warn once into the right thread function, so it warned about itself being there. So and then it just went back to thread of printing after the warning was over. Over so so the the, the takeover and and switchback. I wanted to see that it works. Yeah, I mean that the information about the color might help to distinguish when it's interrupted by some nested even something yes. even bigger priority. 
I mean, we can we can add information here or markers to the into the the, the output where we say, hey, here is where we are taking over. That's details we have to sort out. But I think the most important part is whether we agree on the functionality or on the on the approach itself and and decide to go to go forward with that or just give up and say print K is going to be a a landmine forever. Is this, is this design good? Is yes. This, should we go? Can we go forward with this design? I mean, right now we're fighting with all the little pipe shading. Well, can you? I mean, you're perhaps serious to show what has to be done in the console driver to make this different. So I can't answer that question and see what modifications console drivers have to do. So basically, you have to provide a thread, the thread right callback, the, the right threaded and the right atomic callback. And in, in case of the very, very simple uh, um, serial driver which we used for, for development, uh, they are pretty much the same. Because there's no re-entrancy problem because the, uh, all it does is spin on the, on the, on the TX54 empty uh, bit and then write into the, into the TX register. But then when you have more complex scenarios like to have the Getty on it and, and or if it comes to video uh, 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 frame buffer drivers or net console or whatever, uh, then you, you need more uh, things to consider. Can I actually do this in this context or what's my, my quick path to my emergency buffer or whatever you're holding, holding uh, in the background? Be the pathological case, and I don't think that's real, but I have to have interrupts in order to get my console off that port. And there's some serial ports that I have to have interrupts. You just say, okay, those are not going to work with this. Thing. I mean, it, if you're in a panic situation and you're crashing in the NMI, uh, the NMI stall yeah, kills you, then you definitely don't want to do to touch the USB serials. I agree. So then we just don't provide those and everything will be okay. No, you, what I what I think what we should do should clearly have uh, either that the driver knows it's now atomic. He can either decide I'm bailing. Okay, so so that's a valid thing. So if the driver says I'm atomic. If you tell the console driver uh, you have to do this in atomic in atomic mode, the driver's gonna be like I don't care. I'm out of here. Right. That's okay. So that's why why we have the two the, the two callbacks okay. to, and give context to you. Okay. Right, so, or you just go and say, atomic mode is never going to work. I do not even provide yeah. one. Yeah, that's, that's a number of serial drivers. Yeah. So. Which is fine. Yes. And then we can have properties uh, like this is actually NMI safe. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the core can just say. No, I don't go to those who, who do not declare themselves NMI safe when in I, NMI context. I do not even try. Yeah, we do try, pray, and die. Yeah. But for graphics, that's why we're talking about this blue screen of death solution as an alternative. That we can, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe show something like this, right? Because updating graphics is not possible, but if we can do a splash, splash blue screen. Yeah, something. Something I'm going to put. And the other thing uh, we have in the patch set are those two, three functions for the drivers to they can use, they do not have to, uh, but they should use in under certain uh, circumstances. One is the can I make progress, which if it returns false, you back out and to touch nothing because you know something. Uh, we hand it over and somebody else is caring, but we are in a safe state. And then you can have the enter unsafe section and exit unsafe section callbacks. Or, or functions you invoke, which we are going to be re or reflected in the in the atomic state of the console itself, uh, and there are also cancellation points when somebody else wants to take over, because that's also information you 
we can't we hand back into the right atomic callback and if the driver says oh you took over in an unsafe section i'm not i'm out of here i'm not playing with you i mean i think if you get video and you get pathological usb and then the 8250 i think that's three showing that this is a good one yeah just throwing this out here just a question um for like current way of doing, you know, we just print now in any context, and you know, so to keep that functionality, I was wondering, is there a way on a panic after we printed all the nice good consoles and know that we're just going to shut the machine down? Is there a well, maybe? Okay, now we'll just send it. We're going to lock up. We may lock up anyway. Send it to all the other consoles that we lock up. Right? That's really an administrative decision. It should be because I, I was mm -hmm. talking to to the Kaxa people about that, and they complained that they even re, do not reach Kaxa after printing out okay, their shit. So, so, so we want to have some knobs with where the admin can decide. No, ah, just get it into P store and leave everything else alone. Okay. That's the only thing I'm interested in because that's where I grab the information after after put. Either reaching K AXEC or pushing the reset button. The reason why I bring this up is for those people that are like, you know, there's a general desktop user or whatnot that used to get some data out, but now they don't get any data out because the only they have is uh, unsafe console. Right. Uh, so we still maybe want like an option for like a default option for if you just boot up a desktop and you have unsafe consoles and then something locks up and right now you just get a lock, no output whatsoever. It has something. Uh, I like mean, that. yes, we can, we can have the. We tried everything safe first, and then we do the yeah. let's try, pray, and die mode. Yeah. I mean, the, for those console, right? So if you need to take a lock, the right atomic could do a try lock. I mean, if it's lucky enough and it's not used, it, it does it. Yeah, yes. You no, know, the driver, you don't want to have duplicates. No, no yeah, yeah. yeah. Driver, that's, no, that, that's, that's what's so I mean, there's two. There's one atomic, and yeah, then I'm going to have to go on every one of my right columns. Right. Consoles should be trivial. It's just, they should, okay, they sit over here on the side of the driver, they just beat it in. I mean, what we, what we should look like, especially for a serial, at least for the non USB serial ones, um, uh, right now we do. If you have a Getty on the on the on the same port, uh, we do all the the the, the uh, TX interrupt driven for the regular for the Getty port, um, and then with the Oryx, we we just could just go and do polling mode on those because it's not a high speed uh, uh, operator interface. It's. I mean, everyone does realize. Console on USB serial was a drunken bet. <laughs> I lost that. <laughs> Did you stop drinking afterwards? <laughs> or, or did that start you drinking? <laughs> but, but I'm worried now, so I mean, I'm going to say USB console is, I, if you're, if anything lost the cell and anything's wrong, I'm not going to give you anything else. Because I can't guarantee the interrupts are going to work. And then, like you said, then we're going to start to lose data. That is a sad world. It is a sad world. Okay, don't try. That's going to really suck for embedded. <laughs> I mean, all right, we'll play with it. Yeah, but honestly, the nice thing is if a driver is thinks it's in a questionable state, the best thing it should do is just shut the up. Driver, so because there might be other consoles, like the P-Store, that can get it. Yeah, and I mean, we don't want to stop them. Yeah. You're just saying, here's the one. I think interrupts are hoes. Here's your data, right? As a driver, I'm going to be like, oh, I have to have interrupts to work, which USB does. I'm just not going to send right. out data. Yeah, so yeah. I, but then I lost all the data today. <laughs> right. Over USB, yeah. 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 Well, then it goes to B-Store, which is great. It's, it's, it's this is why we need a state where you know we get to a point where we say, okay, we're going to try. If you don't have KXX, you have, if, we have to have a way of saying that we, we're done. We're going to yeah, we can, we can do that at the very end. The defaults aren't there. And then they try it. Yeah. If there wasn't the P-Store, if there wasn't anybody else, I had to try the interrupt one. I try and so, die. Yeah. So we, we, we can play with that. That's policy decisions. But, yes. But as long as I know what's going on, at least I have a chance. Yes. And you know exactly, 
here we come in in the this is not the regular threaded chit chat yeah. here is something going on from a driver point of view i would love to have i get tons of budget for private graphics want this too i mean is this going to make your life easier yeah i mean i i want it because i see way too many cases where graphics just kills the loops or anything that would be good to get rid of and then maybe uh, a kernel option that says that I don't care because it's the only thing I have. Yeah. To try, to try and die. Right. I love that kernel um, option. Make, try and die. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Try, <laughs> pray, and die. That's the name of the function call. Another thing, maybe, like, would it be possible to have like some debug FS trigger or so that we can test these things in CI? With that, like, I think so. Sure. Should be easy, easy enough. Because, like, my experience is if you don't test it in like normal or in CI, it's broken. Yeah, because right. I can never test any of this stuff in USB. I just it out. No, we can, we can, we can put some knobs into debug FS and which which create exactly the cases we. Yeah, but all the cases like in unsafe takeovers. Yes. Subscribe, but, but, you know, no, they are they are easy to easy enough to create. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, ideally that the right atomic actually runs in an MI, basically, right. and stuff like that. So. At least on a, on a machine which has NMIs, we yeah, can create that. Yeah. And uh, that's, so not, that that's not hard to do. Is there a way to price hard for prioritizing consoles? So, so you always start on the, the, the... So right now it's not, but that's something we, we, we want to do, add to the properties of the console, that the console actually can give more information like am I an NMI safe sure. and then of course we we want for, for for in the later state when we when we really think about it or can be more flexible about it then we can give the operator or That's the admin a, a, a knob to policy and say yeah peace store first right. serial next exactly. and then Please go away. Everything else. <laughs> no, do not no, touch no, everything no, else. No, or, or, or if you have this fancy uh, re-entrancy safe uh, net console uh, queue <laughs> thing, then you can say this is the thing to go first because that gives me all the information in my central uh, uh, data data hole. Yeah, I think it really depends. Like, you think of a server, you yeah. might have zero core hardware, but you might have VGA hardware. Exactly. But there might be nothing connected to it. So right. Or you just make sure it might reach my other processor. Yeah. 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 Or you have yeah. some yeah. some yeah. some uh, uh, PCI Express uh, endpoint connected shared memory to I some. Shared memory came on your yeah. yeah. Whatever. You can get rid of all the early console special casing and drivers <coughs> by just replacing it with the atomic hole. Yes. Cool. Oh, that's oh, wow. Lovely. That's brilliant. Yes. So, is um, so, Zilstra okay on that? Well, he has his extra special. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Actually, when I, the, 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 the simple one we used, it's registered as an early console and then just keeps and it then switches to, to thread it. So, Peter will be happy with that. So, you just use, use print K. But no, 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 meaning a normal console can read, just say I have an interrupt, say output, and that would be the equivalent of early console. So the whole concept of early console should so, die, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. that's brilliant. Yes. 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 yes, please. I yes. hate that. It was always <laughs> yeah. And then we get rid of 100 config options. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, I, I think we can get rid of it because you register it early enough, the regular thing, and it in in the early boot, it wow. just uses uses the the atomic callback mm -hmm. because we have no threads. Yeah, right. Once the thread comes in, we can do thread it, and then later on the whole Getty thing gets on uh, uh, nailed on it, and and it's. I know this is not the first time I've said this, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but to be entirely clear, to be entirely clear. I said this to somebody else today already. Print case, the last thing I'm going to clean up on the legacy mess of Linux. And then I'm going to hand over to young people who can start cleaning up the stuff I put in the, through the kernel 20 years ago. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Can I do one last demo, just really quick? <laughs> Make John happy and look at it. Uh, so in, in this variant, I'm going to let it start because it relies on uh, the 30-second uh, RCU uh, stall uh, time. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. And then uh, I'll explain what just happened. But what I want, uh, I'm just waiting until it's booted. So it's about to be booted here. I have to wait till I have threads. So threads. OK, so it should be done in a second. So, I love this. That's awesome. <laughs> demo. So what this demo does is, is it actually, uh, it switches. We see here that the printer switched to the to the, the CPU four. Uh, and what happens is, is I basically pinned the printer printing thread onto the same CPU that the interrupt handler for this console runs. And then I hacked the normal A250 so that it would crash uh, as soon as an in the next interrupt comes. And so what we have here is that a printing thread that had the acquire, that had acquired the printer, and while it was printing, an interrupt came and interrupted, and in that interrupt handler were crashing. So the port lock has been taken, and interrupts are disabled on that CPU that crashed. And because of uh, RCU, we are seeing this output. So we'll see in a second why why can we see this? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because RCU is the only nice guy in the kernel that just checks that things are are uh, <laughs> uh, still alive. <laughs> really, I tried it with the hung test. No one could detect it because because this one's crashed. But the this. Because why well, implement is an infinite loop, so nothing really really uh, hung. But the, the all, RCU stall recognized this. So if we go back and look, let me go ahead and quit this. So let's go back and just look, because this is an example of a hostile taker that's a little bit more complicated because we can't do this handoff and another CPU died. Okay, so we see that. Uh, here I put myself, uh, I just put a comment in there to say, okay, this CPU is now hanging. We're inside the interrupt callback. And we're saying that all of a sudden CPU zero says, hey, I want to be there and I want to do priority two because the RCU uh, stalls are just priority two. And we see the first line there, and that's the first print K. So the first thing, of course, the whole backlog comes, right? So we see here uh, 30 seconds of backlog printing. But you see that this hand, this takeover was now hostile on another CPU because first I try to be nice. Uh, I request it. I do my spinning. But we, right now we have a two millisecond timeout. Uh, I didn't get it after two milliseconds. And so what happens is, is it, it come, this acquire failed, and I see that it was uh, it, uh, because of a timeout. And now I can set a hostile bit and say, okay, let's try again. And so now it goes in again. But now when it gets the timeout, it says, okay, I'm taking this thing now. So we didn't just immediately hostile. We could it, we could actually decide, do we want to try again hostile? And in this case, we have it so that we do. So it tries again hostile, and now we can print out from uh, CPU zero, right? So now CPU can, zero can do that whole backlog, and we can see. What's the port lock held? The port lock was held, and interrupts are disabled. No, but on the other on the other word. On on the Getty. Okay. On the Getty you are. Okay. Right. This this guy's not even using this guy's not even using interrupts. He's uh, he's not using the port lock. He's not using interrupts. An atomic console can't use the port lock. Right. You can't you can't test the port lock in in NMI context, right? Because it's just a spin lock. So that's the question. So yeah. if RCU stall detection would be disabled, then you would not have this, right? You, you would see you would see nothing. Yeah. Because you have like a watchdog checking for stock serial consoles with NMI. Yeah, uh, if you have uh, if you have an NMI watchdog, it will detect it too because it will yeah. see it hung somewhere. Well, the uh, problem is is how it implemented this. It's actually busy waiting, so it's not hung. This is, this is just a contrived thing. I don't think we have to worry about. Yeah, but it's just showing you yeah. that your interrupts disabled in the con in the in the console. That was the threaded printer, mm -hmm. right? right? So it's not this one that that the interrupt came from this guy, but he interrupted the threaded printer. Right, so the threaded printer was printing, and it got interrupted, and then we crashed. Uh, and so that, that is a real situation. Yes. 
and uh, we're saying that we can recover from this, right? Yeah, and this is a, this works reliably. But yeah, th thanks to RCU in this case. But a real hang probably would have been detected by the kernel hang task or whatever. Okay, so that was the last demo. Right? So. But we have some really great feedback now, so.